was looking for more comfortable shoes. But you took them away somewhere. Is you still waiting for me? Ah. Ah. Why? I thought you should be eating by now. Huh? Not hungry? <laughs> okay. You have translation or not? No? Yes. For the Vietnamese? Uh-huh. So you expect me to speak English? Wow, that's very convenient. So how are you? These are new kids. Oh, new... <laughs> new big kids. <laughs> yeah, who's new? Yeah, why well, you all came? Wow, well, not all, but <laughs> the one who stay in L.A. You are here? In uh, California? All of, all of the new one? Oh, no. Huh? Oh, Arizona, it's not far, it's not far. Ah, it's okay, don't scare him. <laughs> what I mean is the other day when, uh, when we had initiation, there were people come from uh, different countries too, you know, so I thought maybe they're still around. They're not, huh? They're gone, huh? huh? Australia? Wow! Came a long way. How long do you think you want to invade America? <laughs> oh, yeah? You stay here? Fine, you're welcome. <laughs> stay as long as the food lasts. <laughs> All right, I thought I came have lunch with you, but, you know, look so, so official like this. Hmm. You okay, the new one? Feel very welcome. Yeah? Did you uh, have a chance to ask the old initiate some question and all that? You satisfied? Yeah? Any uh, other question that you want to ask me, otherwise you would die? <laughs> huh? Yes, only those, only those questions, you know, life and death. You okay? Uh-huh. All right. Any question? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Kids don't have question, but the adults always have, especially women. <laughs> yes, Namaste ji. Go ahead. I'm a Muslim. Oh, yes? Be welcome. Thank Me you. too. <laughs> mm. okay. uh, you said that uh, God lives in within us. Y well, not I say. It. All the prophets okay. say that. All right. Yeah. Your your prophet say the same. Mohammed said the same, didn't he? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. And he right. even say all religion are from God. Yes. <laughs> and I do believe in that. Yes. And you also said that um, when God is in us, we are also God. Yes. Okay. And I also have another strange feeling. Yes. I feel that uh, you are me and I am you. Wow, that's wonderful. I'm very honored. So is that all right? That's very all right. Is it all right? <laughs> okay. Welcome to the same feeling. <laughs> yeah. So Join the group. They all feel the same way. Don't you feel like that, Pam? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It feels to be good. You know, among my own people. Yes. Um, really, it's ecstatic. Feel like it's your own, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. First time, but yes. like forever. First time. That's the way it should feel. Yes. I'm glad. Yes. I'm and glad yeah. too. <laughs> so what else is the question? I do have another question, but um, should I go public? Oh, go all out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. See, what happened to me, like, um, March 18th, my whole life changed. March my, 18? March 18th, uh -huh. 98. The world was different. Yes. 
I spoke differently, I acted differently, people responded to me differently. And better or...? What? Better. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you know, whatever happens, it's happening. I have no control and yet yeah. I'm very powerful. Yes. People see me as if, you know, I'm controlling them. Mm -hmm. You're controlling them? Yes. They, they say I'm, I manipulate them and I don't. Mm -hmm. It's what like is the day? March 18 was that? March 18th. What is that? Well, tell people, tell people. <laughs> well, what happened was I worked on a project that day for my painting class. You what? A project. Uh -huh. it, it was a drawing I was supposed to do and they asked me to do a self-portrait. Mm -hmm. And I did that and I drew what, I, what was inside me. Mm -hmm. I wrote an Arabic verse on that from Quran, mm -hmm. and that was the real me. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know what had happened, but when, it, when I went outside, mm. it was different. Mm -hmm. Things were happening that, that had never happened to me before. People were responding to me in a different way. Mm -hmm. And when the teacher saw that painting, she said, this is it. She said, Rizwana, you got it. <gasps> She said, you have the content, and this is what you're going to work on forever. Wow, so probably you got it. So, yeah. mm. I, I just, it was so overwhelming, I couldn't believe it. So now, what's the question? The you question don't like is, that? <laughs> <laughs> I do, but, you know, it's, it's hard to believe. I wonder if it's my mind playing tricks on me, or is it real? Well, even if your mind plays trick on you, it's a good trick. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Very pleasant illusion. Yes. <laughs> and there's another thing also. All my dreams, all my wishes are coming true. Mm. And it's not just me. It's whoever, you know, my friends, if they say something to me, or, mm. you know, whoever, and mm. they come and tell me, hey. Mm. Why happens. don't you all learn painting and quick? <laughs> huh? <laughs> Okay, what's your name? Rizwana. Huh? Rizwana. R I C W A N A. Rizwana. Yes, Rizwana. So my question what is What does it mean? <clears throat> Rizwana. Rizwana. Uh, in Quran, uh, well, there are two meanings. One is uh, paradise, mm -hmm. and another one is uh, for the uh, to do something to please God. Mm -hmm. And actually, there's another meaning. It's the Rizwan is the name of the angel who, who's at the gate of heaven. Wow. You are inside already. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, congratulations, whatever it is. Enjoy. Huh? Okay. All right, thank you. Right, you're welcome. Uh, we, o it. we only have to recognize ourselves, and other people will. Hmm? So I just wanted to know. Um, Am I okay? Am I nuts? Are you okay? <laughs> I feel okay. <laughs> <laughs> and it's all right. <laughs> Here everybody says, you know, I'm okay, but out there... Here yeah. everything's not okay? No, here it's, it's okay. okay. Here it's yeah. okay. Out there what? What's out not there, okay? Out uh, there, you know, I'm acting a little, you know... A little what? <laughs> a little like a teenager. <laughs> <laughs> it will pass. <laughs> <laughs> Especially my coming here. You know what my daughter told me? She said, um, Mommy's rebelling. <laughs> well, we can reverse the signs of aging, you know. <laughs> now it's the 21st century, people do that. They have cream and all kinds of things to reverse the aging. <laughs> also, we have cream for the soul. <laughs> you can become young again. That's okay. good. Yeah. Okay. Good. Thank the Prophet you. is very pleased with you. He told me, <laughs> now, if you're pleased with yourself, he's pleased. Okay? Fine. Thank you. Don't worry about it, just live on. Okay? All right. Everything we experience in life uh, will pass, you know, and then we have another experience. Always mm -hmm. better. Always better. So, uh, huh? should I go ahead, like, uh, can I tell my family, my friends? Tell your that family what? That I'm a follower of a uh, Kuan Yin method. Just tell them that you found some friends 
who believe in the Quran, okay. yeah, and they not only believe in the Quran, but they live the way of the Quran. Not only they believe in the Prophet Muhammad and his teaching, but they live his teaching. They try to. And for your, in your opinion, in your experience uh, of integrating with them, you mm-hmm. feel they are truly sincerely mm-hmm. trying to live up to the teaching of the prophets. Mm-hmm. Yeah? So, slowly, like that. Okay. I okay. like that. Yeah. Yes. That, that, yeah, I think that will make more sense. Uh-huh. Yeah. And in the Quran, uh, the prophet mentioned also, don't eat meat, huh? I'll go ahead and really? look, study okay. more the Quran. <laughs> study <laughs> more, study okay. more the Quran right. before you talk to your parents or okay. your relatives again. Okay. Really, you will understand different now. Okay. Everything will be clear to you, very, very clear. Okay. Yes. The Prophet also teach non-discrimination between religious believers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes, and that. so other other followers, you know, they make extreme judgment, and that mm-hmm. is not according to the Quran teaching at all. Mm-hmm. <coughs> Okay. Right. Okay. You, you study you. more of this Quran, okay. okay? Make sure you know what you're talking yes, about. <laughs> yeah, sure, I'll do that. Yes. <coughs> okay. okay, or next Thanks. time. You know, I, I know the Quran, I just suddenly I forgot which page, and you know, <laughs> to tell you, otherwise I have studied the Quran, and exactly the teaching, the same, like all the prophets. <sighs> I'm very happy that you came at last. <laughs> Yeah, well, there we have a lot of other Muslim friends too, you know, but not, not in America perhaps. As you know, in America we don't have too many Muslims, but like in the East, you know, Orient, we have a lot. Yes, sometimes they came and give me a jasmine uh, perfume, you know, which is the uh-huh. Prophet Muhammad's uh, favorite. <laughs> mm-hmm. He used to like jasmine flower. Yes, I love him too. Yeah, uh, yeah this is his favorite. See, we don't <coughs> have him here in America. Yeah. yeah. Or you can buy perfume. Oh, yes. Yeah, I used to I I used to have a lot of jasmine flower in my house too. Mm-hmm. I didn't know there was a prophet's favorite oh. until later on, oh, because it doesn't say so in the Quran. It I didn't know that either. It doesn't yeah, say that in the Quran. It say in another, you know, like kind of biography, kind of his story. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm glad you know so much about Prophet Muhammad. I don't know that much, but. <laughs> Well, Seems like you know more than I do. We are friends. <laughs> <coughs> if you have other yes. question, uh, let me see. Let me just look. <laughs> <laughs> you your big list. No, I guess that's about it. That's it. Thank you very much. Okay, I, I'm very <laughs> sorry. I'm, I'm a little bit <clears throat> of balance. That I forgot a lot about the Quran. Otherwise, I would tell you more. Okay. Yeah. At least you say, be a good guest on earth. Yes, he yes. did. <laughs> Live a rich life mm-hmm. and be a good guest. Yes. He doesn't yeah. tell you to be ascetic either. Rich also spiritually and, and, and you know, materially. Mm-hmm. Be the good guest on earth. Live a rich life here. Mm-hmm. Yes. So he says, a guest. We are guests here, anyhow. He knows. Yes. We are from heaven. See? Yes, we are. So, what else, uh, what else does he mean if mm-hmm. <laughs> we only are guests here? Right? Yes. And he always talk about heaven and God. Always, always. Yes. Nothing else from his mouth. Mm-hmm. And everything else about war and all that is just, you know, like unavoidable. They persecuted them. They trace his footsteps everywhere mm-hmm. and uh, make hell to his disciples. So they have to defend themselves sometimes. It's a matter of unavoidable. Mm-hmm. And during the defense battle, you know, somebody about to die, somebody about to live. Mm -hmm. And then he has to tell, to comfort those people that, you know, by accident, if you, you know, you have to defend yourself and kill other Mm -hmm. beings, then God will take you to heaven because you did it for the righteous cause. Mm -hmm. So some people make use of that to make war later on, and that's just not right. Mm-hmm. Only, but the teaching of the prophet is always right. Just um, we understand <coughs> wrongly sometimes, and that's very sad. Yeah, I'm that so pleased to hear all that. It happened in every religion, you know. Mm-hmm. And the same with the many wives and all that. I dare not tell you, but <laughs> <laughs> shall I tell you? Sure, I'm, okay. I'm <laughs> all ears. 
in those uh, time of Mohammed, are you guy interested? Uh, many wives. <laughs> <laughs> This is about many wives. <laughs> I'm sure they are ears. <coughs> But you'd be shocked. You'd be shocked when uh, the prophet was alive. You know, his teaching provoked a lot of resentment and uh, anger. Of course, because he doesn't teach like anyone else at that time. He teaches that heaven is at hand. Come to me, then I show mm -hmm. you. And then they would think he's a blasphemous, of course, you know, like Jesus. Mm -hmm. So he persecute, they persecuted them. They think he wants a political fame and try to be famous, or maybe against the government, whatever. You know, because he was too famous and too beloved by the people. And of course, any government at that time would feel, feel threatened. Even nowadays, some government would feel threatened if the prophet would <laughs> come back alive, you know, and mm -hmm. lead the people again. So, of course, there were war, you know, people persecuted them. And sometimes, in, in the course of defense, you know, they have to fight with the government. Maybe they didn't even fight. But The government and the soldier, they probably sometimes, by mistake, they kill themselves too. <laughs> <laughs> Or sometimes, by anything, could, could be killed. You know, for example, if they want to thrust the, the sword into the Muslim believer, and suddenly, uh, you know, somehow they fell down, and then the sword, you know, mm -hmm. thrust into themselves. And they would blame the Muslim for killing them at that time, for example. Huh? So, anyhow. <coughs> So the prophet's life at that time was a constant war, constant running, constant hiding. It's a very terrible time for him mm -hmm. and for his followers, but still their faith is very strong, so they stick together. So the men and women, the men would form a shield, you know, around the woman and family. Of course, they would have to be a reluctant shoulders, you know, to be on Allah, to be on a watch out, and they're the one who die first because they were mm -hmm. in the front. And so if they die, the families are left behind. So the compassionate prophet have to tell his leftover disciple, whoever the man left over, have to take care of his brother's wife and kids as your own wife and kids. You understand? And only the one who able. That's why he make a rule, like, mm -hmm. if you give to this wife, <coughs> if, you, if you take, for example, you take on two, three wives from your brothers, then you have to give them exactly the same thing, like you give it to your own wife. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's only fair. You have to treat your brother's family as your own. Of course, no, we do the same here. Of course, there's a brotherhood. <coughs> And then, of course, the, only the one who is able should do that. If you couldn't fit your family, how you take on more family? And that's uh, very fair only. That's very just and very wise. So that's how the brothers took on other wives and kids. That was a, a spirit of brotherhood, because your brother sacrificed his life for you also, and for your family also. Mm -hmm. So his wife and kids you have to take care of, or wife, or kids, or wife mm -hmm. and kids, whatever. If you can, you do it, and share equal your property among you know, your wife and the mm -hmm. other wives. Mm -hmm. Treat it as your own. That's the prophet's uh, uh, compassionate instruction and the, the wise strategy at that time. Yes. It was due, due to the necessity mm -hmm. of that, yes, time, at that time that you yes. can take in more wives than mm -hmm. yes. necessary. But they didn't take it in as wives, you know, as to mm -hmm. take care. Yes. Mm -hmm. so, like the Sikh Guru, mm -hmm. the, I think the last one or the fifth, the fifth? The last one, huh? He was also offered a young wife later on, and mm -hmm. he accepted her. But they now live together. Oh. Yeah, he make her become the mother of the of, of the six soldiers. Mm -hmm. You know, so she took care of him. She oh. wait for him to eat with her. But that's it. Yeah. Okay. So also a wife. Yeah, but <laughs> this is not in the sense okay. like we mm -hmm. take it. Okay. Yeah, a lot of master they do things we don't understand. It's not. It's not really the way we think. Yes. Okay. It looks like, but it's not. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much, um, Master. Yeah, because somebody offered him a, a daughter, you know, because she saved his life somehow. She, oh, he saved her life. So the father thing, okay, this belonged to you in the first place. <laughs> Take her, you know, and he didn't want to hurt the family. Somehow there's some probably situation arise like that. 
So is he accepted? But he only lived with the, the one wife. That's it. Yeah. Okay. What else about interest? Oh God! All the women. Ah, oh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, this one was a second. Okay, man, be patient. <laughs> it's our time. <laughs> if anyone hungry, please go out and eat, huh? It's not obligatory to sit here. Yeah. I would like to know, please, what happens when somebody commits suicide? Well, then he die. <laughs> so many times in um, Western religion, you you hear that. Um, you know, they go to hell for that, or, um, you know, they, they're they condemned for it um, by God. Mm. What is your view? They're not condemned by anybody. They're just in a lower level of consciousness, and they have to stay there for a while. Um, does, it, does it require then... Um, well, obviously, I asked my, qu- my own question, if they haven't reached enlightenment, then they would have to be reborn again and, and pursue again. Oh, sure, of course. Later. Anyone, even, even without commit suicide, they have to be reborn again until they're enlightened. Yeah? Thank you. But they commit suicide people in a lower level. Yeah? Very, very low level, they're suffering. And until they really had enough of it, <laughs> and they get out, or somebody pray for them, you know, like Guan Yin practitioner, really love them, think of them, pray for them, then they get out quicker. Yeah? Commit suicide is a bad crime for yourself. Mm. Should never do that. Okay. Master, I was told that um, I cannot uh, mix my mantra meditation, which I used to do before with Kuan Yin. Uh-huh. It'll be detrimental to my spiritual growth. Ah, so? So you, I should you're, not. You're not concentrate in one thing. You know, concentration. One point devotion is good for everything, anyhow. So since you are here, you might just well have devoted yourself here. If you come back and forth, back and forth like that, you're confusing yourself, hmm? wasting your energy. Capish? Okay. <laughs> it's not forbidden, but it's not very good. It's like you, you know, you, you know that very well. Everything we do, we have to do wholeheartedly, right, in order to mm. get a result. And when you were there, and you should have been devoted there at that time, and since it didn't give you any, eff- any effect, any result, and now you switch to here, and you should be all-hearted here, otherwise you, you get the same, you know, confusion and, and, and no effect again. Waste your time, huh? Okay. It's not forbidden, but it should not be okay. uh, practiced. Thank you. You're welcome. Good afternoon, Master. Um, I had, my question was, uh, I had a uh, friend that believed in you, and he read about you, and he wanted to be initiated, but he wasn't given the chance to init- be initiated because he was uh, killed. And Before that, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. Before and, uh, initiation, he was killed? Yeah. So? And I was wondering, if, is there perhaps in his next life where he'll be able to uh, be initiated by you? into the Kuan Yin or just somehow be saved? <laughs> if he believed before he died, the Master takes care of him. But he wasn't formally initiated. Never mind. Okay. Never mind. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> the formal initiation is for the mind, okay? And the invisible initiation is for the soul. It's not by sitting there listening to instruction that you are liberated. <laughs> the Master communicate with the soul beyond the words, beyond the talking, all right? So if the guy believes in a Master before he dies, even just look at the Master in admiration, one time, straight in the eyes, he's liberated. So don't worry about it, okay? <laughs> Master, I have found that uh, recently when I was meditating that uh, information seems to be come to me very quickly when I ask a question yes. or if it's on my heart. Mm-hmm. Um, and when it's so detailed, I was kind of wondering if I was talking to myself. But uh, 
I imagine since we have the God self within us, isn't that our own soul or is considered the same thing as the inner master speaking to us? If, if it really helps you, if the information is correct, you find it down, then it is. Why isn't it so easy to recollect this information after meditation? <laughs> Why what? Sometimes it's so detailed, sometimes the information is not easily recollected, like visions and things like that. Oh, of course. Then that's why uh, before you meditate, you should have a pad next to you. And jot down quickly the main point, okay? One, two words to recollect later. Yeah, because during meditation, you are in a different level of consciousness. And when you come back to this physical one, you forgot. Because the, the mind is limited, you understand? The mind is limited. It's like a computer. It's not equipped for, 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 for the whole information in the universe. So sometimes it misses out the information, okay? Or it's, uh, or it's defected, you know? It defected the mind, the computer. Yeah. Thank you, Master. Uh, one other simple question which modern religions teach as far as the Christ teaching was concerned. Sometimes they're misrepresented, I understand, or mistaught. Mm -hmm. Is there such thing as an unforgivable sin? I realize we have to forgive ourselves, but uh, no. there is none. No. You have to realize that every soul selects his own path to walk, to walk God in different fashion and different timing. All right? We are here, those who are more uh, experienced, who walk in advance, are ready, like the angel or the masters of the universe, are ready to ex assist any soul should he or she wish to make a different choice in any time of his life. Okay? And a higher choice, of course, the better. In, in that sense, and what did Christ actually mean when he taught uh, blasphemy against the Holy Spirit was unforgivable? What did he mean by that? Or maybe he didn't mean that at all. What is before that and after that? Like say, when he, when he says blasphemy against the Holy Spirit, I don't think anybody understands, even myself really understands it completely, what it would actually take to have an unforgivable sin if there was such a thing. Okay. Unforgivable is in the sense of the word, but there's nothing eternal. Okay? Uh, Maybe suppose if Christ had come and the people who uh, preach falsehood against him, you know, or blacken his name, accuse him for falsely, wrongly, thing like that, that's against the Holy Spirit because he represents the Holy Spirit. So these sins, are, of course, is unforgivable, but it's not eternal. <laughs> as soon as the soul turn around and repent is forgiven. Okay? All right? That's why Jesus do not hate those who condemn him. Also, he knows they have to do their duty. Hmm? They have to do what they did to complete his mission so that he be glorified and honored in heaven as well as on earth up to now. If he didn't die like that, he would be into oblivion, you know? He won't be as famous <laughs> as he is now. Other masters have come and go, but no one is as famous as him. Okay? So those who persecuted him had to do what they had to do, and he knows that. And they are forgiven. The, the role they had to play. Of course, that's not the highest choice that they made, but somebody has to make a choice like that. <laughs> You know, just like in a film, somebody has to be a murderer, somebody has to be a detective, somebody has to be a victim, somebody has to be a hero. So it's a choice we make before we came. Huh? Nothing is unforgivable, even though it seems unforgivable. Yeah? Of course, we should never make a choice like that. But in eternity, in the game of the universe, everyone chooses different way to walk back home, yeah? Sometimes take a long, they like to take a long way. Some people make a shortcut, like we do, yeah? So God knows everything. God forgives everything. It's just we could not forgive ourselves. <laughs> so we should never make low, lowly choice so that we regret after. But therefore the master and the brother stand by all the time to assist us in re-choosing and re Rejoice all the time. We always make a new choice. And depends on your choice, a new event will happen, new direction will open. And then you go into the different dimension. Yeah? That's why every sinner has a chance to become a saint. Any any of them. 
No problem. Hmm? There's always hope. There's always love, plenty of love for everybody. <laughs> Even the worst criminal. All right? Plenty of love. Yes. Thank you. Hello, Master. I'm from Phoenix. I would like to be initiated in the instant. This instant? <laughs> <laughs> Soon, maybe. All right, you are initiated. Soon. But you need to listen to the instruction sometime later, okay? Yes. <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> yeah, we have no time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, Master, um, I was wondering uh, how do you deal with this situation where you are sometimes involved in a place where the offering of, of meat and things like that is concerned to the monks and, and you are around? The Tibetan tradition, right? And, uh, yeah? Yeah. And, and do you just let it go, or do you feel a little uncomfortable and, and think that uh, uh, it's not right? If you feel uncomfortable, you don't have to be there? Huh? Why? You have a choice? Just walk away. <laughs> don't come. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Hello, Master. I would like to thank you uh, very much for... Where are you? <laughs> <laughs> All I have to say is just thank you. Thank you very much for your kindness. That's all I need to say. Okay, no problem. You're welcome. Hello, Master. Um, I was just recently initiated at UC Irvine, and um, I felt so much peace and purity in the last couple of days. And then this person, this uh, man from my past, he was an ex-boyfriend, calls me, and I want your help. And I was just feeling so much love and wanting to give. And I go there, and I give. <clears throat> and this thing, how I can't explain it. I don't know what it is that I'm doing or what, how, what happens, but I feel so much from people, like energy, and sometimes it's like impure energy. And when I'm feeling happy and I'm feeling this purity and this love and I'm shining and I feel beautiful and I... And then I feel this impurity, and it's like things flow when I feel that way. But then when I feel this impurity, it's like this dirt that comes in me, and I feel like, ugh. And I shut down, and I just, you know, now it's like I feel so awful from being around him. And, and you know, I'm upset that I went to this person from my past, you know, because so many wonderful things are happening now, and that I'm creating now. And, and, but I want to be this light that can shine and I don't like when I'm around you it's like I feel this 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 energy of purity just bathing my soul and I feel pure but other people it's like dirt <laughs> well you ask them they know well it's you cannot help the way you feel even though you didn't expect that right you didn't come with that negative feeling. You come with all love and <laughs> devotion and compassion, but look what you got. Well, that's the reality. That's the problem. Not that we expected that. It just come, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, when uh, you come around people, you try to recite uh, God's name and ask for more love, more protection, more compassion, and more understanding before you contact people. All right? And then that will help you. But what is it that I'm feeling? I mean, what is that, that vibration or that frequency that I'm picking up from them? It's just they are in a lower level than you are. And you have to come a little bit down in order to meet them. Mm. It's just an automatic system. You don't do it on purpose. And so when you come down like that, you feel coarse. Yeah? You feel the coarse vibration because you're not used to it anymore. You were up there. And then suddenly, because you love that person, you, you have to come down automatically. That's normal, even though you don't see it with your eyes. But it's just like somebody sick in the hospital, right? You are healthy. Now you come to see that person, and you love that person so much, so you come in the hospital. So in the hospital, automatically you, you feel the, you know, the disinfectant, Air, you know, the, the, the medicine smell and the bandage and the 
plus and the, you know, all kind of urinated, all kind of, you know, hospital smell. And you see the suffering, you know, and you cannot bear, so your heart feels uneasy and painful. It's not like you feel it when you are in a party on a wedding day, you know. So it's automatic. Yeah? Even though before you go to the hospital, you had no idea how you would feel, and you didn't expect any uh, you know, negative feeling, but it would happen, because you're in the hospital. You have to be there in order to be with your loved one. Same, same. You have to come down to a little level in order to meet the one that you care for. And in that level, that's all you feel. Dirt, uncomfortable, yeah, unpleasantness, and you know, coarse atmosphere. You can't help the way you feel, and he can't help the way he feels. So either you go there or you stay here. Stay up or you go down. It's up to you. But will I ever get to the the level where I won't do that, where I can walk in the purity and the love and stay there and not feel their dirt? No, honey, no. I'm sorry. <laughs> you walked in the hospital. You in the hospital, whether you are the you know the pristine, healthy person, the most you know brilliant doctor, you still feel the hospital, you still feel the pain of the people, you still feel the misery around you. You can't escape. Hmm? It's not you. It's it's the place. It's the way it is. It's the way it should be. Yeah, even the saints go into the hell. He has to also. Feel it, but he come anyhow. But this temporary, okay? So your feeling is temporary. Like you can see that person and you feel that unpleasantness. But at least you can come home and bathe again in the holy light and be pure and feel good again. You see, he is forever in that area. Imagine. So feel sorry for him. Do what you can if you want to. If he needs it. If he's receptive, if he forever wants to sing there himself, then you have to leave after some time. Yeah? Don't drown with him. Thank you. You're welcome. No, at least you know the difference now. You didn't know before. <laughs> see? At least you have a choice now, see? You know so different between the black and white. I told you, I told you, I take you back to the kingdom of God and now. Now you believe. Hello, Master. It Where are you? Oh, yes. Right here, Master. Hi. <clears throat> Master, <clears throat> I, uh, I also come from a different um, religious background, uh, one of Christianity. Um, I presently have um, a few small children under the age of five, and um, we, we meditate every night together to the extent that they understand what's going on. Yes. But the mother is still of the Christian tradition and is now embarking on uh, a course of indoctrinating them in the Christian uh, religion. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, the the um, background that she's trying to move them towards is one of a, of a fundamental, uh, fundamental uh, Pentecostal type of Christianity, Pasta. which is no, no, Pentecostal, oh, Pentecostal, which in and of itself is a very doctrinal um, yes. background, position. Yes. yes. I'm just wondering whether you could speak on um, how a parent is to share their faith in enlightenment and the truth with their child when they're being taught and indoctrinated in a very legalistic form at their very young age. Mm. And that is also without causing hostility within the yes, marriage. Yes, I know. Is anyone who have the same experience who can share with him? Because I don't have a wife who is this orthodoxical <laughs> tradition and a kid who <laughs> who are torn between. Well, you know, Master, I think it could also be said with you know Islam, you know, because that's a very um, <clears throat> a very rigid form of religion. Uh -huh. um, on my path to enlightenment, I did <clears throat> for about a period of one year. In um, Islam study is, Islam uh, as well. Uh -huh. <clears throat> so Good that's, for you. <clears throat> but that was only for about one year. Yeah, and it's okay. It's okay. <clears throat> so it's not just Christianity that wants to indoctrinate their children into a certain 
-hmm. background or religion. Mm -hmm. So this is not just something that you can maybe address okay. for Christianity, but also any religion where the parents are of different uh -huh. uh, viewpoints. You want to talk, brother, about that? Yes, please. These two. Wait. Yes. You have two, no? Please. I, uh, I came from a family where my mother was extremely legalistic. And um, my father was always very open-minded. He believed that God speak through all religions. And um, believe, it or, believe it or not, my experience has been anyway that children are, they absorb everything around them without necessarily even verbalizing it or expressing it. Yes. And when I look at the way I grew up, I mean, I adopted my mom's religion in high school, and it was very happy for me as a born-again Christian. But as I got older and went out into the world, I started just naturally following more of the path that my dad took. And I can look back at my life, and I realize that that presence of my dad's, you know, his influence, it's always there. And I, I, I would have to say that maybe silence and maybe just say some things once, once in a while, but to a large degree, kids will choose their own path once they get out of the protection of, of their parents. Oh, good idea. <laughs> um, <clears throat> to his question, um, from my experience, is that if you show yourself loving, and don't make a fight battle between your wife. Let mm -hmm. them join the Christian religion because it is also good. Mm -hmm. And it has a lot of strong meaning behind what it says. Mm -hmm. And just live the way you're living. And when your children look at you and see this, then they'll know. Mm -hmm. uh, they want to learn with like, you. Like what the brother here mm -hmm. said, they'll, they'll, when they get older enough, they'll, they'll go the way they feel that yes. makes them feel good. Yeah, it's good, it's good. Master, I, I concur with those two other views. Yes. And I just wanted to, to, um, to acknowledge that master power is the strongest. Um, after becoming enlightened, uh, there it really is no insurmountable conflict taking place within my home because master power is omnipresent in our situation as well. So, but I just wanted to hear what your comments may have been in the, on the matter. Well, the brother said already everything. Thank you. <laughs> very nice. And you also very, very good. I'm very, very pleased. You see, um, you can also join them in the Christian class if you want to. Yes. Yeah, and then sometime enlighten them in some of the, the subject. Yeah, say, yeah, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, yeah, everybody can, <laughs> one at a time. <laughs> yes. One more. Um, my mother is, was also very fundamentalist, and I was, I was always a vegetarian since eighth grade, mm. and she watched me. Now they're becoming vegetarians. Mm. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Look at you. <laughs> Good representative. Yeah, here, the ladies. Okay. You want to talk about that? No. No, 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 wait, 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 wait. You want to talk about that? Uh, okay, yes. go ahead while we're still there. Yes. Uh, because uh, I also have four kids, and I was just initiated two days ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> I haven't really told them what I'm doing, but I know, you know, because this, Quan Yin, it's not something so, you know, drastically different. Yes, no. I know, it's the same. Yes. The beautiful thing about it is, it's like, Quran is this big. Mm -hmm. and they, I, I know, I haven't read it all. Yes. So I don't expect them to read it. Yes. But the little handbook that you gave me, I read it the same night. Uh -huh. And I knew, I mean, it's so simple. The teachings are right there. It's like in black and white. And I've been following all those things you know, the, my whole life. So I'm not changing my religion. No, nothing at all. Nothing yes, changed. Yes. I'm just enforcing it. Yes. And what I'm adding to it is a vegetarian diet mm -hmm. and uh, two and a half hours of meditation. Mm -hmm. And I have been doing that all my life. Yeah, too. you're praying. Yes. That's the meditation. If you talk about this subject, then continue. If the question, yeah, about this subject? No, question now? Okay. Uh, Master, please forgive me about this because I'm very ignorant about this. Can you please give me a good example of what is intuition and what is feeling? 
Oh. Well, I guess they are almost the same. Now, intuition is more correct, it's more accurate, it's more obvious, you know? Like you know the thing is right, and that's intuition. Without explanation, you couldn't even explain why you know it's right, and that's intuition, yeah? A feeling is a little wider range. You have a feeling for somebody, you're feeling hurt, but it's not necessarily accurate. Your feeling is not necessarily, not necessarily uh, uh, right, you know? You might feel hurt because your ego is hurt. That doesn't mean that person truly hurt you or truly really wanted to hurt you or you should truly feel hurt, you see? So that's a little different feeling. But you can also say, that I feel this is right, I know it, my feeling tells me it's right. And at that time, then the feeling is the intuition and the intuition is the feeling, you see? So, <laughs> I don't know, you so want to make a, a dictionary, uh, huh? So it's a matter of uh, the individual who has to figure out himself either if, it's, if that situation regarding cer certain, certain things, if it's uh, intuition or feeling? Yes, of course. Okay? okay. Thank you. Brother, Mark. yes, you're very welcome. Uh, uh, I would like to share something with you and hopefully um, get uh, comments and feedback from you. Yes? I have a real soft spot for... Um, animals in particular and, and homeless people. Animals? And, uh, animals and homeless people in particular. Homeless and people? A, a real soft spot for animals and homeless people. And well then, if there's anything that I can ever do for them, um, even if it's just a little bit... Oh, do what you feel I like. Try. But I feel like um, when, I'm, when I do something very small for someone who's very down and out, I get so much more from them, from them in return. Be then do it. Okay. But you have to do what you're individually inclined to do, okay? And you do what your heart feels right, all right? If you love somebody, that's great. Love conquers everything, okay? <laughs> but the homeless people doesn't mean they're not pure. Who say they're not? They're very pure. They have nothing to lose, that's why they're pure. <laughs> yes. They're more simple, you know? They live day by day. They live on the grace of God. Every day they're praying for their meal, at least. Yes? And this and that. Yes. You first, please. Yeah, I, I have a question about, um, you know, well, the, I, ha I had this naive idea when I came down here that, um, although it seemed too good to be true, that um, after the initiation I would just suddenly feel like a master. Yeah. yeah, why not? Congratulations. And I <laughs> Well, I felt that We have a new master here. <laughs> I can just step down any time you're ready. <laughs> well, I'm just wondering. I mean, I felt a little bit the next day, but then my mind sort of got control again. Mm. And <laughs> And I'm just wondering um what does the instant enlightenment mean? Does that mean that we are enlightened, but we, now we just have to clear the blocks? Or, I mean, what just happened? What were we initiated into? <laughs> Anybody can explain that? Since you are the same boat, you also feel like new masters. Huh? Anybody can want to explain that? Here, here, here. There's a master here I want to explain to you. Give a microphone quickly. <laughs> Why not? We have fun, huh? The more master, the better. <laughs> I'll be free. Take turn. <laughs> I can't ab be absolutely sure, but the way I feel about it is we were just initiated into the kingdom of God, and because we're in this world, we have to learn here until we get back home. That's all I can think of. Bingo. <laughs> um, I'll submit my humble feeling on the matter. Um, there's a difference between mind and the spiritual plane, if you will. Um, what takes place during meditation at times when you're in samadhi, um, you may not remember what took place, you may not really know what is taking place, but something is taking place, and as you develop, that thing will, in time, it won't happen overnight, it will reveal itself into your present consciousness. Mm -hmm. But just believe and have faith that this thing is taking place in the, in the spiritual realm, because it is. And continue with your practice. Be diligent in your practice. 
and the five precepts. Mm. Wow. <laughs> master number one, master number two. <laughs> and master number three. <laughs> we lady, we humble. We're number three. What else? What other idea? Yes? No? It's, no it's idea? A totally new question. Oh, oh wait, wait. Continue? I... She has not finished. Huh? No. You, you, you hold the microphone until your turn. Yes? Well, just one other quick question um, regarding uh, harming any sentient beings. How do you feel about, one, the wearing of leather, and number two, I don't know if this is true or not, but somebody told me that when uh, silk is collected, the worm is killed. So how do you feel about wearing silk and uh, wearing leather? I don't feel anything. I don't wear them. <laughs> so are you sh saying that in keeping in accordance with uh, not harming sentient beings, we shouldn't wear silk and we shouldn't wear leather? Mm, um, even in Buddhism, they're allowed to wear it in certain occasion. Hmm? Uh, the Buddha also accept a silk robe. Yes. It is true that the silk were killed but some nowadays they make silk look very much alike, even better, without the real thing. So you may buy them and wear them. They look elegant, beautiful. Most of my design are from that kind of silk. But perhaps sometimes they go out and buy different <laughs> wrong kind of silk, and it's okay. I mean, should not be too fanatic. You don't wear it for yourself, it's fine. Yeah? And the leather things, people don't kill for leather most of the time, right? They kill the cow for food. Uh -huh. And so the leather and, you know, nails and horns sometimes, those things are left over, and people use it for shoes or belt. You may wear them if you wish to, but uh, some people are sensitive. They don't like to be reminded of slaughterhouse, so they don't wear them. And that is also very good. Okay? But do not condemn people when they wear them. All right? <laughs> yes. Uh, yes, brother. I'll let the lady first. Okay. <laughs> yes. Okay, Master. I have a question about my beloved animals. I wonder if animals reincarnate or if they have an opportunity to change their level. Well, we all do have opportunity to change our levels, be it human or animals. Yes? They do reincarnate too. How do they change their, How do they change their level? Can we help them? Uh, of course, of course. By their own also, by their own also. Don't forget, they also have God consciousness in them. They also creation from God. God takes care. Is when it okay to have them with us when we meditate? They seem to enjoy oh, sure, being with me. Oh, sure, of course, why not, if you want to. Hmm? Thank you. I have a teddy bear when I meditate. <laughs> Small one like this. Hey, it's very cute. Warm. <laughs> and I bet real animal is more warm, huh? Well, it depends on if your animal don't disturb you, you see. Then it's good. It's good. <laughs> That's a funny story. I probably told it already, but it was in Chinese. It's like this. There was a master. Uh, before he meditated, he always, you know, chased his cat out, you know of the house and close it. So after he died, the successor or whatever left over, uh, self-proclaimed successor, always chased that cat before he meditated. <laughs> yeah. So it, it is very funny because the cat belonged to the previous master and of course they are attached to each other, you know. The cat liked very much to always be around the master, and when he meditate, he want to, you know, snore around him, so he don't want to be disturbed, yeah. Because sometimes even the cat is quiet, but he meditate long hours, perhaps, you know, and the cat want to go out, want to eat, want to snuggle, you know, or what, cuddle, whatever. So the master want to make sure the cat is out, so he can sit as long as he want. So he chase him out. That's it. Just chase, but not beat him. But the, the next one always chased that poor cat, even though the cat don't even have anything to do with him. <laughs> he don't even like him because it's not his master. Yeah, he don't even stick to him. But he always chased after the poor cat, don't even understand anything. <laughs> A run like <laughs> Yes. So it depends, you see? Depends on the animal. Yes. 
Yes, brother? Um, there's a lot of questions I want to ask you, but there's no time. You know, I mean, I wish I could spend every day of my life with you, you know? All right. But, uh, <laughs> okay, brother. Then why don't we um, take care of the most important to you first? Um, I allow you three first, okay? Three? Three. <laughs> okay, okay. It went stretched a little bit, but let's see. No. Um, I have so many, whether, whether it's auditory hallucinations or visions or, or lower astral world, whatever it is, it happens all the time. But, but is it the lower astral? Is it auditory hallucinations or is it truth? It's, it's, sometimes it's got to be lower. But all sometimes right. it's all loving and bliss. Uh -huh. So, Fine, then enjoy when it's loving and bliss. And then, okay, but Ignore now... Ignore the other one. Then another thing is, I sincerely wish that somebody, and hopefully you, would humble me because I go through mood swings. Sometimes I get really angry at God for all the suffering, but that's got to be ego, right? No, no, it's not. Don't have to be ego all the time, brother, you know? Sometimes we do feel like we are the master, and that's righteously so. It's just that uh, you don't, you're not able to keep that <coughs> consciousness all the time. That's why you have to practice more until you're sure about what you are. I teach you to be a master. That's correct, the way you feel. And in some blissful moment, with abundant grace of God, you do feel you are a master. And that's correct, and that is very correct. It's just you have to practice more in order to keep that feeling all the time. That's all, okay? Nothing wrong with that, mm -hmm. right? If you feel angry at God, well, go ahead, tell Him. If you feel loving, go ahead, tell Him. He doesn't care whether you're angry with Him or you're loving Him. As long as you do your stuff, focus your attention and don't forget Him. Okay. Mm? Then and one... change yourself for the better. Okay. We get angry with God because sometimes things are too overwhelmed for our mind, too much. Despite our best effort, things still doesn't go right the way we expect. Yeah. But in the long run, in the grand design of the universe, everything is correct. Everything is perfect. So it's all right. You just be yourself, and God like that. God doesn't like phony praise and fake emotion. It's okay. All right, brother, be yourself. You are what you are, and when you understand completely, then you will no longer be angry with God. And that's all right. He has eternity to wait for you. Master, what causes poverty? It's caused proper poverty. Poverty. Poor, right? No, nothing causes it. Just the way it is. <laughs> well, I wish I could tell you that because the man is stupid, lazy, uh, <laughs> don't have opportunity, but it's not the case. Some people are very intelligent, very diligent, still cannot make it. Right? So it must be the way they have chosen to do that. Their karma, you can blame it for an easy way out. <laughs> it's just in the universe, somebody has to be poor, some people have to be rich. So you see some lousy guy are very rich, some good people are very poor. So when you look at that, you blame God for being unfair. No, it's not. Some people chose to be poor. They like it. It served their purpose in enlightenment. This is their, their choice. It's all right. But we have to ex assist them whenever they need, and if it's in our means. We always have to do our best to assist the, the less fortunate people, be it in material or in spiritual need, understand? But that's all, no judgment, no why, how, what. <laughs> you cannot. It's too much question. So, if yeah. a person if a person chooses to get out of poverty, then they can. The person what chooses to get out of poverty, then they can. 
Or they can, then, then it's in their destiny that first they are poor and later they are rich, just like me. <laughs> can I ask just one more question? Yes, yeah, sure. Um, You're not hungry, guys? No. <laughs> Keep quiet, okay? <laughs> no. no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Go ahead. What causes people to be mean to another person? <laughs> Same like poverty. <laughs> we can explain a lot, you know, make, write a book about it, but actually there's nothing really makes sense. Nothing is really true about what we say about anything in this world. Everything just appears so. Like he appeared to be mean to that person, but actually he's good to that person. He appeared to kill the person, but actually he's not. Yeah? And he appeared to, to push that person to the edge, but actually he's helping him to elevate. You know? And why that person uh, treat the other person bad is this is all very uh, complicated pattern of karma, and then it boils down in the end to nothing. There's nothing at all, no enemies, no bad guys, no good guys. It's all the very wonderful, intricate drama of the universe. And we do enjoy them all, that's why we play them every day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't worry about it, everything is perfect. It's just sometimes our time is up, okay? Like us here, our time is up. So we're not going to play longer in this physical drama. We're prepared to go home. We just play our last assignment. You know, the contract is ending, but we don't just step out in at the near the end of the movie just because we're going to sign contract with another <laughs> company. We, we play the last minutes of the film to finish it, okay? That's why we're still living in here. That's our last minutes of the, the play. Other people, they still continue to play their parts, and they like it, they so like it. It just it doesn't seem so to the mind and to the physical understanding, but everybody is playing wonderfully. Nobody complains at all. In your track to become who you are, was anybody ever mean to you, like really viciously, cruelly mean to you? Mm, let me think. This thing I forgot. Mm, I don't really think so. Well, I used to have a classmate, she was mean to me. <laughs> I was f very famous in school. That was when I was, um, you know, like primary school. Yeah. I am beloved by all my teachers, as my teacher would have told you, one of my teachers. And that girl, she's also my cousin. I don't mention the name. <laughs> Every time from school, if I happen to walk with her, she scolds me from the First minute we left the class until the last minute when I enter my house. We live near each other, just cross the street. And she just say all kinds of things about me, and I could not imagine why she say that. So I just kept quiet all the time. And that's how I learned to be humble. And now I think about it, I think she was my great teacher. Because I was too famous, she has to balance my life. She couldn't let my ego run ahead of me, you know? I was too beloved, too famous, too, too good, always first in the class, and everybody loved me. So she's the only one who took on the dirty job <laughs> yeah, of polishing me. So I, I sent money to help her sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And there are also some other people who cross my path, you, who always humble me in some way. But later we were all friends. I never had any hatred, as far as I remember, since I was a child. Never ever ever had hatred in my heart. I always treat the people who treat me badly good. I treat them good. And that's why sometimes they turn around and call me a living Buddha, before I even took over this job. I was a teenager and I already was a living Buddha. Yeah, because the way I treat them, I don't hold any. Uh, you call it? 
grudge it, our resentment. Never ever feel anything bad about these people, ever. I just feel nothing. <laughs> yeah, just maybe surprised. You know, that I was better when I was young, purer. You know, now, now if you talk bad to me, I talk at you back. <laughs> I say, hey, watch it, I'm a master, you know? <laughs> okay. Next one. Okay, you speak sp uh, Spanish. Yes. Open it. Master, she wants to ask you. She always, when has, sometimes when she's meditating in the sound, she see. Uh, terrible animals. She wants to listen from you. What does she need to do? She. Oh. oh. What kind of terrible animal? Like a uh, horrible animal. She doesn't like to. Like what? Like. Uh, this is. Huh? Like a f uh, ugly, ugly animal. This doesn't. She can. Well, how does uh -huh. she know it's from ugly animal? Because what kind? she said that she doesn't like to see them. <laughs> oh, see them also? Yeah. Okay, then she repeat the five names for a while, mm -hmm. and then the animals will disappear. Uh -huh. She says that she repeat the name, but she starts to, to feel afraid, and she doesn't want to stay meditation. She wants to stop. Okay, repeat the five names, call the master help, and later on, when you feel better, you continue meditate. Okay, um, I don't really have much questions about it. I want to thank you for uh, everything and for the initiation and for talking. And um, I was really impressed by your speech at, um, UCLA? <laughs> at UCI. Oh. Um, I first started meditating before this, and um, after, um, my father had tried to commit suicide. Oh. And um, it was a very revealing and human experience for me because um, it was I was able to see his human side. That's how I see it. As um, we all have, you know, fragile side. Yes. yes. And uh, it developed a lot more compassion in me. Mm -hmm. And um, so um, when I meditated, I felt a lot of feeling, um, a very good feeling, because I developed a lot more compassion. And um, when you were talking about um, that we're part, all children of God, and then um, I believe that also that uh, part of your message is, um, and I mean, have it exactly, but that we we have a right to be happy inside of ourselves, and yes. and and that's that brings us closer to God, mm -hmm. or or closer to whatever we might want to call it, because everybody has many different names, and. Um, the other thing is, um, also, my uh, lately, I've gotten a better relationship with my wife, and um, we have different personalities. I was a much more passive type of person, and um, it's been I've given her some space, and the relationship's gotten a lot better, and um, become more tolerant. And I've noticed that about uh, this meditation has helped me just feel more centered and see the uh, beautiful parts of people, even when uh, they might even say something disturbing or something. I try to solve the problem, and it's, it's, a, it's been very uh, helpful. And mm. I just wanted to say thank you. Oh, thanks, God. <laughs> That's good to hear. Very, very good to hear. Thưa Master, con có một điều xin xin hỏi sư phụ để học được học hỏi thêm. Số là bà con chết 5 năm nay Nhưng có một hôm con thấy sư phụ truyền tâm ấn cho bà con Thì xin sư phụ có thể khai giải thích thêm về điều này Có gì đâu phải giải thích Tại vì thường thì sư phụ nói là chỉ siêu thăng đó Mà theo con nghĩ thì khi mà truyền tâm ấn thì là được giải thoát Thì nó có, nó, nó, nó có khác biệt gì với cái sự siêu thăng thường hay không? Phải truyền tâm ấn cho ổng, ổng có siêu thân chứ. Ừ. Ok. 
nói mình một người uh, truyền tâm mắn là năm đời giải thoát mà thì cũng phải kiếm cách nào để giải thoát chứ đâu phải khơi khơi cái giải hả? <cười> Cảm ơn sư phụ. À, no problem. Có nhiều người ở trong địa ngục tối thù rồi xa tú cái dưới một trăm tầng ở dưới á phải đi xuống xa lắm á rồi mình mẩy cột trói lung tung hết trơn ngồi trên trong gai đủ thứ phải xuống nó phải, phải, phải kéo nó lên nó nói khơi khơi cái giải hả next one um. Uh, I, I grew up in a Christian home, and so I grew up with specific views about um, what God was like and what Jesus was like, mm -hmm. and um, most particularly that God knew everything and that Jesus also knew everything um, at the same time. And first of well, all, God knew everything, and and the same attributes that God had were attributed to Jesus, uh -huh. um, such that He knows everything about all of us in here. And my question is kind of twofold. First of all, what can you tell me about um, who you know as God? And the second part is um, I, I recognize in you some of the limitations of humanity, such as not knowing every language that there is or you know, not knowing people's names. Um, and yet I grew up thinking somehow that that's what you know, Jesus was able to do just somehow intuitively he knew it all can you please explain the relationship between master and god and also give an explanation of of what god is like the difference between jesus and god is that he is crucified and he feel the pain god not god is never crucified God never have to eat. God never walk. God don't need to wear clothes. God don't even talk. Not to talk about languages. And Jesus only spoke one language, Hebrew. All right? I'm sorry, we are limited. So find another master. <laughs> master, please do not understand. I wasn't speaking um, in negative terms. I was... I was comparing. I know, I know. I'm not speaking that was in a negative term. Either. I'm humorous. <laughs> you don't have a sense of humor. <laughs> uh, well, the master is encased in the body, all right, and he has to do what the body can do. Hmm? It doesn't matter. The master understands all language inside. Hmm? Or the Mexican who see the master inside converse in Mexican language. Or same with the Chinese, the Vietnamese, the Hebrew, the Zulu, the Yeah. Any 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 dialect the master understand. But inside, okay? Outside is is different. Right. The master the real master has two parts. Inside master and outside master. Most of the master have only inside and don't have the outside. Like the past masters and the future masters, they are not in the physical realm, so we cannot contact them easily. The only way we can contact those masters is through a physical master, most of the time. And then the physical master will lead you to see those uh, in unphysical masters, then converse with them, learn with them. All right? And meanwhile, you learn with the physical master what the physical master can teach also. Yeah? And other so-called masters, they have only physical aspect and don't have the invisible aspect. And that's you're lacking something. You see? So these both categories of the master uh, is even more uh, inefficient. Yes. So the, the true master ha is the one who has physical aspect and the ethereal aspect as well. So you can contact him in the physical body, talk to in the physical language, and while you descend, ascend inside, you can see him or her in uh, the spiritual aspect as well, and he or her take you further. Yeah? So that's more convenient. One thing that has been amazing to me is um, 
after meeting you and um, and hearing some of the things that you've said, I'm shocked at what a difference it makes to actually meet somebody in person, um, a living master, rather than just learning about you know some being that you ha you know you can't really make a connection. I know, with. small fun. <laughs> small fun. <laughs> That's why the so God always have to send you know his servant to come meet mankind. Yeah, I'm probably one of the the the, the last on the list servants, <laughs> servant of his servants. But at the moment, there's no one else, so just take me <laughs> for fun. <laughs> I'm just showing you how to go back to God and then see Jesus, you know. Every other defect is human nature, that's true. And every good thing is from God. Everything good you see from me is Him. Everything bad you see from me is human, that I have to suffer, same like everyone else, yeah? I have stomach problems sometimes, I have headache, I have all kinds of things, I have my temper, I have my like and dislike. Yeah, but that has any, nothing to do with the path I show you. The guide is just a guide. The road is as perfect as it is. Yes, so walk on it. Yeah, right. <laughs> you again, Master? Come on. <laughs> Are you feeling as a Master now, or you back to normal? <laughs> Yeah. Um, I had a question that related to something the gentleman back there brought up, which deals with the nature of psychological illnesses. And I've thought a lot about it. My grandmother was institutionalized and heard voices and spent years banging her head against the wall and was finally given a frontal lobotomy. And so I've spent a lot of time trying to understand what happened to her. And she's dead now, so I'm not interested for her, but mm -hmm. just... You know, your booklet says we shouldn't help people. Um, you know, I, I was told that she was she lived on a Revolutionary War battlefield. Somebody said that maybe she was, you know, haunted I, by the ghosts. Other people told me that sometimes you can have s covers to your chakras that get blown off and lower mm -hmm. vibrational frequencies come in. But I guess one question is, is there anything we can do to help these people or do we just leave them to their own karma? And the second question is, I mean, can you elaborate a little bit on what goes on? Because sometimes you find people who they have psychological problems and they try and they try and they try to get past these, but you know, you can't stand being around them. But you have, you know, when you're away from them, I have a lot of compassion from them for them. And how would you suggest that you know, when we run into people like that, like this gentleman seems to run into them all the time, how do we? How do we handle a situation like that and, you know, not help them? How can we help them just by being who we are and leave them to their own karma? Did I say we shouldn't help people? Well, it's sort of, the way I read it, it... it um, you read it, it wrong. Well, how... What am I doing here if we should not help <sighs> people? I guess the way I read it is that you shouldn't go out and try to heal people. Oh, spiritual healing is different. Helping people suffering is different. Hmm? I'm talking about spiritual healing, using your magical power to temper with people's, uh, you know, consciousness. It's different. Well, can you address a little bit about um, well, what, the, what one can do to help someone who's deeply psychologically troubled? You know, they will help themselves in time. You help the best you can, the best you know how. Yeah? We always have to help people if they need you. It doesn't matter, psychological, mental, material, phys uh, spiritual, we always have to help people. But the amount of uh, acceptance is up to them. Don't forget, even if they're crazy, they're God. They play fool. They like that. They wake up in time. But you help as much as you can for your own benefit. Otherwise, you don't have compassion. It's no good for you. See? You pray to them, you talk to them, you hold their hands, you bring them food, you, you do whatever in your power to make you feel that you're doing the right thing. And that's important. 
Okay? It's you who are important, not them. Really. They're playing fool to uh, evoke your compassion. Yeah, they choose to be poor so you can be generous. Hmm? They choose to be crazy so you thank God that you are awakened. Huh? Everything has to have a con contrast so that you recognize how good you are, how blessed you are. Okay? It's you who are important. Everyone is important to him or herself. Remember that. Whatever you do is for yourself. Nobody in the universe needs you anything, truly speaking. But at that time, they don't understand that. When they come to call you for help, they really also think they need you. And you also really think you need to help them. And that's perfectly all right. That's the way it is. Okay? So do what you can, anytime, anywhere, to help people. That's a must <laughs> to evolve. Okay? But don't just don't think they're, they're really not, they're really poor, they really need you. They do seem that way. But in eternity, they are not. Okay? Right. That's why, that's why an enlightened person help, but not helping. Yeah? Um, understand the people, sympathize people, but, do, but don't sink into their sorrow. Very balanced. Yeah. Because if we drown together with the person who is drowning, we can't help them either. See what I mean? You have to be very cool, <laughs> very cool, very clear. Yeah? Yes, ma'am? I don't know if this is a crazy question, but how long did you practice the Kuan Yin method before you attained the levels that you've reached? How long? Oh, five seconds. Five mm. seconds. <laughs> She's already master. <laughs> Just your mind hinder you. But to go as far clear as... Clear it, clear it, clear it, clear it. Yeah. All right? Okay, thank you. Yes. You already master before you came to me, before you got initiation, before you even hear about Kuan method. But did you realize when, when you Yeah, that's the problem with the brain. Instantly. Yeah, that's the brain, that's the brain. There's a habit. That's what we call karma, you see? All our habit thinking, all the brain washing, saying you are nothing, you are worm, you are sinful, you... Uh, this and that and other, we're not, we're not that. It takes a long meditation to clear this understanding, all right? Even now I tell you, you are Buddha, you don't believe me. You might believe me because uh, I say so, but <laughs> you're still the same <laughs> self. <laughs> so it's no use, okay? Thank you. Yeah, make it your own. Okay, next one. If not, then we go to practice solar plexus. Okay. Yeah, come on. Yeah. Yeah. <笑>我要聽聲音就好了 就集中声音就可以了<笑> 金属就是录起来那些古代的人的体验
都听见了，嗯，那我就没法避开这左耳朵，我就想挺困难，看这怎么办，师傅。你就注意那个这边还有上面，嗯，是右面叫了。有时候在逛逛的时候，他也不自觉的就来了。知道。有时睡睡觉，或者就咱们就刚才方才正大伙儿谈话的时候，他也就来了。嗯。嗯，他就自然想了，这没有关系吧？这这就没关系，就不要注意左面就 OK 了。嗯嗯。嗯，我不明白，我这这个有一段呢，光看光的时候吧，是吧？先是紫光，现在紫光没有了，而且呢，现在。有这个，其中如果没有黄的，也没有蓝的了，它就是那个在红的当中出那个白亮点、嗯、白亮点呢，它站不住，呃，很快就没了。哇，不，这个亮点呢很多，有是这帮来，有是这帮来。啊、哦，我不知道这是好不好。你自己没有集中好，嗯，多打坐以后它会稳定。OK。打坐就稳定了。打坐它会稳定。昨天晚上因为我急于见师傅，心情激动，在三点多钟的时候呢，我往下一躺，这个屋子本来是挺黑的，但我一闭眼睛，哎呀，我说怎么天亮了呢？嗯、我一睁开眼看屋里还挺黑，但实际呢，我闭眼睛还挺亮的、嗯，这样能坚持四十多分钟。嗯。然后呢，又一回，帮接近四点左右钟的时候，我躺着又来。又亮了一会儿，这回呢能有二十左右分钟。我想这个不是眼睛的毛病，还是正常吧。我觉得好像不太正常。就像呃天要蒙蒙亮的时候，就像天要亮了，就这样一个状态。我觉得不正常，奇怪，天那么黑，你又看那么亮，<笑>不正常嘞，啊？<笑>怎么办？<笑>还想看黑哈？我不要看黑，看黑我要求师傅保持这个亮。哈哈哈哈哈！就看你嘛 ，OK？ 嗯。Anybody else? Again? Go, 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 ask. And then afternoon we just relax, hang around. I just, I just had two questions actually.、Um, one was that I just really, really don't like feeling hurt from people. Hurt? The dirt, the, the, the dirt from people. Oh, I understand. The vibration, the I, coarse vibration. It's something that's bothered me for a long. Who likes? Time. Who likes? Nobody likes. You like, Sophie? They all know. They don't like. They why like to avoid, but they cannot. They saw dirt in this world. You feel it? I live in it, honey. I live in it. She likes it. I swim in it every day. I got used to it by now. So, but by chanting the five names, will that help me to raise my vibration does, so that it, does it doesn't、help. affect me so much? Yes, that's why I told everyone to recite God's name all the time to protect yourself. Yeah, and when you come home, cleanse it immediately by meditation. Okay. And then before you go face the world, equip yourself with the powerhouse in our meditation. So that's that's why morning and evening, you have to do it. Okay. What else we do? Or leave the world. Leave. <laughs> Where to? Huh? Right. Yes. So I had a most amazing experience in December, where I, I was in my, I was in my bed. It was night time, and all of a sudden I heard angels, and I heard thousands of them, and it was like oh, but just magnified、mm -hmm. by like、mm -hmm. thousands.、Mm. Then my body started. Vibrating, and then I left my body, and I went out into the courtyard, and I was flying with the angels. They were there. They were really, really, really big,、mm -hmm. and they were angels. Yes. Then next, the next day, I had told my mother, and I told my brother. Oh, shouldn't. <laughs> well, this is this okay, is before okay, I met. Yeah,、uh, yeah, yeah. I hadn't been initiated. Okay, okay. Well, I did the convenient method, but I didn't do. I but still,、really? convenient method is still experience. Really? What do you think? Where you get the experience from? <laughs> okay,、mm. never mind. All the convenient method people should remind them: don't talk about the experience. Never mind. Okay, okay, forget it now. It's done. So what? But then, then my brother, he was at the table. My other brother and I hadn't told him this experience, and he says, he said, 
oh, guess what? Last night I heard the angels and there were thousands of them, mm -hmm. right? So he it was also like, heard, yes. So he heard them. He didn't fly. He didn't go yes, up there with yes. them. But my, um, my question is, I never really believed you know, in them so much before. Now I really believe. But are these realms, I mean, was, was that real? Are there realms like that, that the angels are there and the other... Of course. Really? That's when you die. <laughs> yeah, you die daily. Hmm. You leave your body, come back, you see that? The real resurrection. People only met angels when they die, remember? When the angel come and take them to a higher realm, but you can die like that every time and come back. That's what we call liberation in this lifetime. Now heaven is at hand, etc., etc. Now you know what the Bible is talking about. Huh? And, and even though your brother was not <laughs> in the same you know, category as you, you are, and before you told him, he also heard it, because of the transmission between you. Brother and sister, your your vibration lift him up also. That's what we are, the Kuan Yin practitioner. Everywhere we go, even if you are convenient method, you're already in the our family. Okay, it's just a testing period for you. Um, also to see if you can go on, if you want it really. So, so it doesn't matter if you're Kuan Yin method or not, or, or convenient method. It should keep your experience. It's okay. They know it already anyhow. And your brother also sensed it, yeah, heard it. So the thing is, uh, we, the, the meditator, the, the serious practitioners, uh, you bless everywhere you go, everyone you see, everyone you think of, be it humans or animals or even ghosts or angels, you know. We bless them without knowing. It's just by chance that you know that. So your brother was blessed by you at that time, because you rise your level and he's nearby, so he was blessed. He's more sensitive, he picked it up. But the whole family was blessed, just they did not know. Your brother was the most sensitive, so he knows. Okay? Okay. All thank right. you, Master. I also want to say thank you so much for all the newsletters that you sent out. I really love them. Oh, newsletters? The newsletters? My, I don't send anything out, honey. This. <laughs> they, they do everything themselves. You know? They you. send me so one beautiful. also. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this you have to thank to our bro our brothers and sisters. Thank you know, you. they really work hard. They translate, they transcribe, and they type, and they email it, and then they select them, and then edit in them, and then print them, and clap them together. You know, and then send them. You know, it's all their labors, all the labors of love. Yeah, so you thank them. Hmm? Without them, uh, I cannot do all this work. I cannot do anything. Right? I can only talk. <laughs> In a few languages at the most. <laughs> well, five level. <laughs> five levels. Five language. <laughs> okay, okay. See you out there. Dining table. <laughs>